What's up, YouTube? You know who it is. It's your boy, Mims, coming at you live with another, uh, not another, but a dual commentary with my boy, iPod King Carter. Now, Here, what's going on, y'all? It's the Superman to YouTube. I'm checking in with Mims277 right now. What's up, everybody? You know, we have to do it. We have to do it, iPod. But there's one question I always want to ask you. Ask away. <laughs> All right. I'm sure everyone else is curious about this, but... How did you get the name iPod King Carter? <laughs> Man, that's a long but short story. Um, the word iPod comes from me always being on my iPod back in high school. And um, always trying to unlock somebody's iPhone or nowadays unlocking iPads and everything like that. The word King basically comes from putting iPod King together. Um, I'm a big DJ Drama fan and Lil Wayne fan. So, you know, back when... DJ Drama and Lil Wayne were coming out with the uh, the series of his mixtapes. You know, DJ Drama called himself the iPod King one time, and I just only I, I seen that it suited me and it fit me better than him. You know, so and the Carter's basically comes from my last name, so you know I just put it together. So you know that's why I call myself iPod King Carter. I've had it for years though, so it's a it's it's, it's nothing new to me. Like a lot of people that know me call me iPod. And a lot of people that, you know, of course, people on here and on Twitter call me iPod King. So I'm used to it by now. Oh, so you were the go-to guy if you wanted to get your iPhone jailbroken and everything? Because I'm the yes. exact same in high school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, it started off with the 2G uh, iPhones with the metal back. And then it moved on to the newer 3Gs, 3GSs, and now it's the 4s. Like I, I still do it till this day. You know, I'm when I'm at work at the airport, people still come up to me and say, "Hey, man, I need, I need an update on City. What's up?" And I just be like, "You know what? It's no problem. I got the laptop on my side. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like my gun. <laughs> like it stays on my hip. Like, and <laughs> it's crazy because it's a, it's a 19 inch laptop and it's heavy as hell. But I always keep it on. Me. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We could keep going on in, uh, to this iPhone discussion, but. I bet the fans want to know more about what we do and why we do it. So tell everyone, how did you get into this whole YouTube business and starting to make videos and all that? How would you get into it? Oh, uh, man, um, that came from me just being on YouTube trying to figure out certain things about certain games. Like I used to YouTube a lot of different um, story mode games on how to do this and how to do that with game walkthroughs. And then I started seeing people playing NBA 2K11 and putting up videos. Um, I think the first video that I seen go up was uh, from D. Coopson. Like, that's your man. I know straight off the bat that's your man. I think that, I think my first NBA 2K10 video I seen was his. And then I just was like, I was, I was, I was on it after that. I pulled out my cell phone and just went crazy. But, you know, over time I upgraded my capture, uh, devices and now I'm on the HD PVR. Wow. That's a solid investment, those PVRs, because I remember when me and Coop first started out and we would be using EasyCap and because of that, we pro I probably don't have the audience I should be having because I was lucky enough to upload to Machinima Sports back when they were getting a ton of views as opposed to now, like if you upload now you get 1,000 views back when they first started out and back when me and Coop started out, Chris Smooth was still uploading Machinima Sports and Everyone thought that Machinima Sports was the best place to go for sports videos, and you'd get easy 20,000 views. Yeah. Back then, to tell you the truth, I really didn't know too much about Machinima Sports. Like, I'm not even going to lie. I, I'm really a noob at the whole YouTube community. But, like, over time, you know, hooking up with people like Waza now, hitting up D Coop, you know, when I was in the beginning, like, I started realizing that, it was it was bigger than Nino Brown, like like you feel me, like it was so much bigger than what I expected. Like I expected just for it to be people on top, and then it would just be the rest of us stragglers. But for real, for real, you got the beginners, you got the subs, you got the friends, you got the underground, you got um, the underrated commentators, and you of course you have your you know your high end commentators, you know, with a lot of subs and you know a lot of people behind them, so. I found out a lot, you know, in this YouTube community, and I really appreciate everybody that, you know, showed me along the way and that keep coming, like, 
seriously, but you know, but too much about me. What's up with you, man? Like you started out with D Coop himself. Like I, I know that's your man. I seen y'all in crew games killing. Like yo, put yo, put me D on what your life been like, man? Cause I know you you've been in the spotlight for a while. Uh, being uh being with D Coop, it all started when he got his um, dual com with Chris Smooth. But even before that. How we started out was we I was looking for a crew. I just bought NBA 2K10, and I'm like, I need a crew. And I was originally thinking, let me start a crew with my friend. But none of my friends got 2K10 yet. So I said, all right, let me. Uh, this is going to be a temporary thing. I just go find a person who's trying to start a 2K10 crew, and I'll join it. So out of all the crews that were open... I magically uh, go to Coop's crew. Like, I post in his forum. It says, yeah, I'm looking for people to join my crew. I tell Coop I'm willing, I'm willing to join his crew. This is before he, we even started on YouTube. And oh. if you actually go back to the thread, the thread, um, it shows Luke, both me and Luke, saying, yeah, we're willing to join your crew. So, <laughs> and Luke had, like, a seven foot five center. I had my shooting guard six foot six and we all joined the crew this ended uh, <laughs> this was originally supposed to be a temporary thing but it ended up being more like a yeah my friends could join our crew <laughs> rather than me leaving my crew and joining up with my friends and to this day we still run crew games play call of duty he introduced me to the whole originally it was, we were supposed to just upload our true highlights online it turned out to be bigger and um, yeah as of now we think thankfully we have machine uh, we have uh partnerships and we getting paid for doing something we both love to do and that's a wonderful thing we're both really thankful for it and um that's how me and Coop got started on this and that's what's up, for real, for real. But I do have a question that probably all of your subs and friends probably been wanting to ask you. When will you be getting a YouTube partner um, layout? Mm, what do you mean by that? Like, you know how, like, if you go to Coop page, he has the uh, top banner with the links and, you know, his his thing says to Coop and all of that? Mm, not really. Oh, layout, layout. Oh, yeah, you like yeah. the background, right? Yeah, yeah, for your YouTube page. Um, I'm really not sure. I actually haven't even thought about it. Um, oh, you haven't? Th yo, man, I think you should bring out a video about that, man. For real. Because just imagine, like, you know, your partner with YouTube, well, Machinima, and your whole page is partner, but of course everyone sees the ads and everything like that, but they, they want to see the experience. You know, just imagine you come up with a video, say, hey, um, I'm, I'm offering anybody out there, you know, to make me a YouTube partner, wallpaper, layout, background, whatever you call it, and just see how that goes over some crazy gameplay. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. That's not like a good idea. I'll definitely get to it. I didn't think that was one of the bigger things that myself was thinking, but I'm definitely down to do it. Yeah. You know? But... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I thought, tell me something, what's your favorite type of game to edit? Like 2K, Black Ops, Midnight Club? To tell you the truth, I love editing 2K. Just because of the simple fact that I get to see highlights for a whole hour. Because <laughs> uh, I average about, I would say, 10 to 17 highlight plays per game. So I really have to watch the whole video to see what type of moves I did. Because, you know, as you're playing and recording, you know, of course you're raging. But at the same time, <laughs> you're not actually looking at the gameplay. But you may get hype. But, you know, when you watch it for yourself and you just be like, you just sit back and relax and be like, yo, I really did that. So, you know, I, I love editing 2K. Black Ops isn't so much editing, you know, you just slap slap a little bit of audio onto that. And Midnight Club is just about the same way, to tell you the truth. Um, when you're editing Midnight Club, all you're really doing is, uh, is from where the point that you start on the map, all you do is pick a challenge, you drive to the challenge, you meet up with the challenge, face it. And then your editing is really done because all you have to do is just probably edit out a little bit of crashes that you have here and there. 
and you know me like my, my whole setup on midnight club is a cop chase a red light race and a tourney so once i do that that basically my my whole job is done on midnight club yeah yeah i get it um they, i think the same way but the thing is i look to my videos to do different things for example Number one, I have to watch, at the very beginning, when I first uploaded to Machinima Sports, there was, I'm sure you got this too, there was a bunch of hate about you trying to be like Chris Smooth. <laughs> yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Like, yeah. It still goes on now, but not as much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not as much. Um, I have a, I have like a diagram of what type of you know feedback you get about the whole Chris Smooth situation because I've went to a few of your videos even your personal videos it seems like you know people just come just to troll you know and and it's not even like that maybe they don't understand that you may look up to Chris Smooth and he was the only person that was doing his thing that you were listening to at the time as you and Coop were coming up. So when you're doing commentary in the beginning, mostly everything may sound just like Chris Moore because it's hilarious, it's entertaining, and you want people to know that, you know, it's other commentators out there. So, you know, they have to give you a chance to grow as a commentator to me. Like Definitely. The, definitely. Yeah. At the same time, I got, like... Uh, yeah, at the same time, there were those type of... Uh, guys saying that this guy has potential and mm -hmm. yeah just give him a few months he'll be good but at the same time there's people saying you're trying to be like Chris Smooth and unfortunately this gets some people like it's not not me but some people in the community to hate Chris Smooth when it's not really his fault if you ask me like yeah. he's, he's a great commentator with a huge fan base it's like there's not much you could do but yeah, it's like it's like going to a, a concert and you just you're just going to sit in the front row and not like the music. Like it's, it's like it's nothing you can really do. You know what I'm saying as long as you're in the community, like the diagram that I have is like like you said, a lot of people say, hey, you're trying to be like Chris Smooth. And then your next step is, hey, you ain't Chris Smooth. Then your next step after that is, hey, Chris Smooth would beat you in an NBA game. And then the next thing would be, hey, you know what? You're pretty good, but Chris Smooth is better. Then, <laughs> like, you'll have the one, like, a couple people will say, like, hey, nice video. Uh, do you know Chris Smooth? Or, hey, uh, you and Chris Smooth are the best. Or, hey, do you and Chris Smooth ever play together? Do you know him personally? Or they'll even say, you know, you're better than Chris Move eventually. You know, me personally, I like to bring a lot of different type of gameplay. I, I'm not, I'm not never trying to be like nobody in the game because I, me, myself, I have five of my players. Um, I have a ton of different games. You know, if I, if I wanted to do vlogging, I could, you know, it's no problem. But, you know, so many people compare you that sometimes it strays you away from what you want to do. But, you know, that's true. And, um, it's hilarious because I at one point uploaded an NCAA video and some guy said, uh, you're, uh, you're trying to be like Chris Smooth because you're uploading sports games. And I'm like, really? <laughs> wow. I know, right? Wow. <laughs> but I, I honestly, like, that's what I warn people when they want to upload a machine of sports. I'm like, listen, you're going to get a bunch of hate at first. You got to keep going at it you know yeah, you just gotta fight it man yeah and if you eventually you get there you know you'll get there eventually your videos uh, it's definitely a time thing like you need to figure out what you want to do with your channel eventually um how i look at my channel is my commentary style at least is my channel is basically a personal diary where i would tell my subs what's on my mind what, uh, if anything crazy's happened to me lately, like, if I went to some party and something happened to me, or I would give them girl advice for, you know, those struggling, you know, we all went through the struggle, you know what I'm saying, iPod? <laughs> yeah, I know about that. <laughs> yeah, especially when I was in high school, I would give them, uh, I had a girl advice series, which I'll definitely bring back when I, when I get a few more Call of Duty subscribers. I, uh, you know, and my newest thing is, uh, since I never seen this, and I don't know why, but I've never seen this. Um, 
NBA 2K11 has a modding community. So I decided to, because whenever someone wants to download a mod, mm -hmm. they'll go and they'll check out, uh, yeah, they'll go and they'll check out you know, the video, a video for it. But since there's no videos out, I said, why not show off some videos of 2K11 mods? Obviously, that's interesting. So, in fact, my latest video is the Cleveland Cavaliers taking on, what's it called, the Minnesota Timberwolves, and it features Kyrie Irving and all that. So, uh, Yeah, so you made a few creative players, you know, off of stats and downloads and everything like that. Like, do you use do you use 2K Share for that, or you create them um, one by one? Um, actually, it's on PC, so. Oh, it's on PC. Ah. So they look legitimate. If you want to check that out, it's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I'm on my way there now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. But man, um, it was it was definitely an honor in this dual con, man. For real, for real. Like, yo, this is <laughs> this is probably the smoothest dual con I've done in a while. Seriously, but um, I know the fans probably like, hey man, these guys are starting to ramble. Um, they, they, I know they're hoping that the gameplay that they've been watching has been amazing, and of course it has. You know, we keep a high high stature, but you know, videos have to come to an end. Mims, I appreciate the offer, man. I appreciate doing the dual com. Let them know where they can find you at, man. Yeah, you already know. Just type in Mims two seven seven on YouTube. Uh, real talk if you want to come and see some cool videos some guy just telling you how it is with some really nice gameplays and not just some guy that would ramble on like we kind of did in this dual com <laughs> um, you know if you want a guy that tells you how it is tells you what he feels about everything without not without being afraid of what people might think of him um, and just a really chill channel in general you come check me out and if you're not satisfied, money back guaranteed. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, of course, I'm signing out of this one. I only got to say one thing. Just Google me. <laughs> Real talk. Um, We're going to get at you guys later. Peace. Peace out.